Thanks for coming in. I didn't notice you. I'm actually led you here because I've got a problem and I'm going to unburden myself to you and hopefully you know, sharing the problem helps. Uh, as you can see, I'm making a simple MDF box. The box is going to be the backing for a new vanity light. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. It simply needs to be smooth so that when it's painted it kind of blends into the background and it seems to be visible. Uh, so what I'm doing right now is sanding it with my ETS 155. It's a nice 6-inch sander or 150 millimeter sander because God forbid we should do things in the English measurements festival. Um, and it's got a 5 millimeter orbit. So it's fairly aggressive, nice and flat, with a, with a relatively coarse paper such as the 120 grit it has on it now. It does a very nice job of flattening the surface. And I'll then move up to other grits. Um, I've got it conveniently over here in my sander cart. It hangs nicely there. And with the cart, it's easily attachable to both suction and electric. And the way I've built this cart, I can easily switch between, say, that ETS 150 to an RO90. I can plug in the RO90, and I'm good to go. And I can put the RO90 back when I'm done. So I've built this cart to be nice and efficient when switching between sanders. Because most of my work is shaped, and shaped or sculpted. And I find that switching between sanders is very important, and I like to have them all right on easy access there. But since I'm sanding this simple square box right now, I find myself only using the ETS-150, because it does a great job on flat surfaces. And all I need to do here is use one sander progressing through multiple grits. And while the big cart isn't a detriment, it doesn't help me when all I need to do is switch the paper. In fact, the problem I have when all I need to do is switch the paper is that though the vacuum, the CT dust extractor, does a great job of keeping the dust off the surface and out of the air, it still gets dust behind the paper and on the platen. And if I would only switch once or twice, I think I could easily put a new piece of paper over that old platen. But as time goes on, the hook and loop fasteners here will cake with dust, especially the back of the pads cake with dust. And to go back to that original 120 pad, you can see the face of the pad is perfectly serviceable. These Festool pads, as expensive as they are, they tend to last a long time. So I want to keep the back clean so that I can reuse it. But to do it, given the current setup, well, I could unhook this vacuum hose and throw the switch down on the CT and switch it to on, but this Festool vacuum hose, while it connects to Festool devices wonderfully, and it actually connects to some Porta Cable devices wonderfully too, it's utterly useless if you don't want to connect it to a tool. So that's, that's out. The option I've been faced with is taking this rigid vacuum, and I actually have to turn on the vacuum first so that when I remove the Festool vacuum, it sucks all the dust out of the fitting. So I'll turn that on. So now that I've got the Festool vacuum off, I take the rigid vacuum, and I install the rigid vacuum. Now I can turn it on and clean off my platen and my paper. Nice dust-free paper and a dust-free platen. Now if I want to use the sander again, I'll first I'll take the time now to affix my 180 grit paper. So it takes about a second to line up the holes. And now the sander is ready to go. But I don't have any suction because the hose isn't. So let's switch hoses again. rigid hose. Put this up out of the way. Reconnect the Festool hose. Switch the vacuum into auto mode. 
and now I'm ready to send. Now, you may say to yourself, well, oh, yeah, I mean, it only took a minute, uh, what's the big deal? And I, you're right, to do it once, it's not that big a deal. But to do it continually, as I work through progressive grits to get this finer and finer, and as I work in other projects where I need to go through not three grits, but six grits or eight grits, it becomes very time consuming and very frustrating when I spend more time switching hoses and cleaning platens than I do actually sanding. Um, so, that's my problem. I guess there's not a solution and that's just a problem we're going to have to live with. Maybe I'll trade in my sanders, but for now, I'm going to get back to work. Wait, 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 wait! I've got it! I don't have to deal with this problem anymore. I'll just leave this vacuum set up to clear this sandpaper through the platen and from the workpiece and it'll use a different vacuum to clean off the dust. In fact, while another shop vac would do, that's floor space I don't need to take up. Since I'm already a user of the Milwaukee 12 volt system, I'll use this. clean enough to eat off of. And for the paper, that's smooth as a baby's bottom. Man, I wish I'd thought of this before. This stupid little Milwaukee vacuum is all you need for this small sanding on the back of your paper and the face of your platen between sanding grits. Well, that solves my sanding problem. Let's go make some wood smooth.